Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lil Richard, Lynette. <laughs> and your boy, <laughs> Stanley. All right, we're coming in with Queen Sugar, yeah. Season 5, Episode 2, March 2020. Listen. Mid-March 2020. <sighs> I'm not sure I want to go on this journey with Queen Sugar with... Yeah, because you got to relay this skit all over again. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it... <laughs> Look, this is the month that I start to get my PTSD. This was the month that I had surgery. I've been in this house ever since yep. this month, yep. last year. So when they say mid-March 2020, oh, that re I, oh, I can relate to that like nobody else can. Oh yeah, cause mid-March was when I came home and started working from home. Yeah. Yeah. I had my two week post-op appointment and Skip had gotten real that quick. Yep. And then after that, I couldn't even have an appointment. Because they couldn't, they were just too scared to see anybody in person. Yep. So <laughs> they are really taking us on a realistic timeline, a realistic journey that I'm not sure I want to go back to. Like I don't want to yeah. relive this. And especially like if, as things unfold, and you be like, man, I wish it was that easy. Two weeks and yeah, we'll I wish get it into it. Yeah, we'll get into it. <laughs> we'll get into it. So let's just go ahead and get into with this episode yeah. with how it started off. We got Ralph, Angel, and Dollar. They have started talking about their wedding plans and they have agreed that they're going to do this little thing called um, Small But Stylish. That's the yeah. wedding that they want to have. Ralph Angel is in charge of setting um, of wherever they want to go for their honeymoon. So he was like, you know what? I've never been to New York before. I've mm. always wanted to go and go to see one of those nice Broadway plays. Yeah, mine. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. See, if you've never been to a Broadway play or yeah. seen a Broadway production in New York, mm -hmm. It's everything. Like you would think it's something now, real cheesy or something like that, but it is everything. Now, now I will say it's it's kind of cheesy for your honeymoon. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely cheesy. But for if that. that's what he but, wants to do, uh, we can't like, talk. We had our honeymoon in Williamsburg. It wanted a Broadway play. <laughs> 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 but hey, I understand, Raw. Yeah, I but we've had time, a whole lot of duos. tight, man. You got to do what you got to do. Ties was tight for us. We did what we had to do, too. But shoot, good from Louisiana to got doing uh, New York. New York that's, is, that's, that's, that's a little height. That's yeah, what man. And I, I know you ain't planning on driving that truck up there because we don't they know. They ain't going to make it. So they Ooh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> definitely going to take Spirit of Front Teeth. They got to take one of them. But either way, that ticket going to cost you some money. Man. And it's gonna, you're going to have to get a whole lot of corn and sugar cane out in the fields. Huh. But, um. So this week we see that evidently Parker and Charlie had an agreement for a meeting. So we see Charlie goes up to where Parker is supposed to be, which is Edward, and she not there. She don't hmm. clear her schedule and all of that. Well, later on we found out from this guy named Tariq that works at the airlines that, um, oh, she caught the latest and the last flight out of here on last night straight to New York with only a carry-on for first class. Mm -hmm. So she was like, so that means that she was in some type of hurry, hurry. like something like, going on. Like yeah. something is really up. And I'm like, so what does that have to do with Parker? Yeah. Like in the grand scheme of things, like we got this vibe is going on. We got like, but I ain't trying to think too much about it. Yeah. So when she left about it and listen, Charlie read the receptionist, the administrative assistant, the executive administrative assistant, whatever it is that she was, whatever her title is, she read that poor little white girl for filth. She was like, oh, that's unacceptable. Unacceptable. At least you could have given me a phone call to let me know that she, her schedule was clear and she not going to be here. Cause my time is valuable too. That's one thing I can't stand. Don't waste my time. Yeah. That is my pet peeve in life. Don't lie on me and don't waste my time. So she calls, well, Charlie, that is. She calls Nova, or Noah calls her one or the other, and they're just speaking about that and what had just happened. So now we realize that Nova is really in her feelings. Like, she's mm -hmm. really nervous about what is about to happen today. I didn't realize it was happening that day. Yeah, I thought it was like, yeah. A few weeks down the road. But yeah. no, she's going to meet Calvin's side of the family on today, and she's nervous. She doesn't know how it's going to go down. She's already kind of got a briefing from Calvin about how the grandfather was. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't know what to expect. She was like, I'm going to meet his kids. I was like, first of all, I think you should have met the kids way before this family function, because, yeah, that's just something you, yeah, Break that up. <laughs> Small pieces. You know, like... You but usually it plays out that way when kids don't like the other person that you chose. So, the other person kind of... Kind of get thrown in there? Yeah, so, yeah. 
So we see Nova. She gets over there to the house. And Calvin's mother is very pleasant. Like, she's like, I've heard so much about you. You're even more beautiful in person than what my son says you were. So I was like, okay, this okay, is going on. Okay, going off good. This is, yeah. But I, I noticed old mama kept her eye on the situation she on at hand. You know how yeah. it is when your uncle bring another woman to the function, but you really like the other woman that he was with. And all of us is watching from afar, like, what's about to go down? Because my other aunt about to pop up in here in a minute. That's how the mama <laughs> was looking at this whole entire situation. So Nova goes over there to the grandfather, presents him with a bottle of scotch, an aged bottle of scotch. You could tell by the look on his face at first. He was like, what you right. don't, what why, you don't why want? Why in the hell did you bring this black chick up over here? But then when the scotch came... He was like, oh, this is a fine oh, he, bottle of scotch. Uh -huh. I said, so that's what it takes. Yo, I <laughs> That's what it takes for you to settle down. He ain't care for Nova, but he could appreciate a good bottle of scotch. So he was okay for the moment. Then Calvin's daughter came over, and she was very pleasant. Um, they, and they hit it off pretty much right away, as, as, as well as they could in that environment. The son, uh -uh. new, new, new. But it's usually the oldest kids, though. Yeah, yeah. Because so. they know and they remember. Yeah. And mm -hmm. So then Calvin's ex-wife pops up on the scene. And Nova was like, you didn't tell, tell me, me that she was, she was gonna, coming. He said, yeah, I, I didn't know. know she going to be there either. I said, I believe you knew. But anyway. But I said, I said, I said, this get ready to make a turn right here because everything was going too smooth. When you see a white lady do their head like this and walk <laughs> towards you, they with the skits. Say about some skit already happened. <laughs> they turn their head like this and they walk towards you, they with the skits. And when she turned her head and she walked towards Nova like this, I said, oh, uh -huh, she There you go. She was like, oh, Nova, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. How does it feel to be the other woman? How does it feel to be the person responsible for tearing a family apart? Because Nova was telling her, you know, how great of children she are. She said, yeah. And they survived all of that, even with you tearing our family, family apart. apart. I, I said, like, oh, hell. I said, you're going to have to eat that Nova. Yeah, she telling the right. Because, she said it in the wrong place, but she said but the she right said thing. But she said the right thing. Yeah. Because you did. I mean, you were sleeping with a married man. He's the married man. <laughs> but you participated. You played the game. Yeah. So what she said to you, you just going to have to eat it. So Calvin jumped in it, and all of a sudden, <laughs> Some of Calvin's little secrets, some of his little skeletons started falling out the closet. And Homegirl did this skit on purpose because oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. she knew that Nova didn't know this information. Yeah. Well, come find out. Mr. Calvin got a thing for black women. Yeah, he done dipped in the chocolate several times. Because she told Nova, she said, so you're the one that made it in so many words. Oh, because you're not the only one. You were one of several, of several, of several. <laughs> And matter of fact, you're much skinnier than most of them are because he just likes some exotic, dark, thick. And you just a little smaller. So than Calvin he... said he like himself a big butt and a smile, I boy. I couldn't even pass on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see Nova's whole spirit like, I'm holding it together in front of you, but we're going to have to have a conversation mm -hmm. on afterwards. So Calvin was like, no, no, no. She was the one who got my heart. The only one that got my heart. All the rest of them were just passing through. I said, Calvin, you ain't had to read them girls uh, like that. <laughs> you ain't had to do that at all. I hate when people do that. Act like all the other ones didn't matter. Because they would but, but the question is, should Calvin told her that yes. information? But it sounds like she didn't tell him about her pride guy. Um, because he said, I know you had guys prior to me. Well, I'm skipping ahead, yeah. but we haven't got there yet. Yeah. But yeah. Well, they had a conversation about yeah. it. Yeah. And she was really broken about it because in her defense, she didn't want to be a satisfaction of his fetish. Yeah. Like, if you have a thing for my type and my kind. Is it me that you want? I don't, don't want to be a bucket list item. So once you check it off and then after you get done with yeah. it. Like the other women. Do I get? You, do I tickle your fancy? Like is this what it. that is? Mm -hmm. um, and he was like no. No, no, no. Don't even think like that. And she was like but you should have told me. And I agree. I think he should have told her. Yeah. I mean because at the end of the day. Why wouldn't you tell her? But yeah, I think I, I really do. I really do think that Calvin really do love love Nova for real. Yeah, he don't brought because her he around. Because he sacrificed, he sacrificed his kids and and usually. Well, no, I can't. I'm ready to say. I usually, say no. I'm ready to say usually fathers don't do that. They do it but, all the time. Yeah, they do it all the time. But I actually think 
that Calvin like know for real. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. So we got um we got our man Hollywood. He's still trying to get his um his spot up and running. He got Mr. Prosper over there. Mr. Prosper was like, listen. Man, Hollywood is the smoothest dude I know. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, I he mean, is. smooth. He remind me of Uncle Kenny so bad. Yeah, he do. <laughs> yeah, he do. And um, Prosper, you know, you can tell that something is really weighing on Prosper's heart. Like, he mm -hmm. was like, what you doing here is real good. Back in the day, me and the fellas got together mm -hmm. every, Thursday every Thursday night. night. Then all of a sudden, you know, it just stopped. And it kind of puts you in a, a mindset to really just think about how back in the day you and your friends used to always like connect at certain times or mm -hmm. you know at least periodically. There's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We, we too <laughs> yeah. old to be doing that. We now. can't do it now. <laughs> and what I was getting ready to say is we've gotten older and we've gotten away from our foundational um, friendships and relationships. Sometimes mm -hmm. I know at some point that I had to go back and repair mine because you you grow, you start doing different things, your career takes off, you get married, other people in the in the group get kids, and you know things like that. So you, it's not that you grow apart. Your lives are just taking you in different. I directions. mean, now there's nobody ever taught us how to balance our real life and our friends. No one has ever taught us how to have relationships. Yeah, that too. Real talk. Yeah, and like I was going on with that. Gen genuine relationships because people have relationships but they not genuine and also because i was also having this conversation about me my nieces and my nephews i was like no one has taught us how to be aunties and uncles because mm -hmm. aunties and uncles are not what they used to be back in the day like real talk i got 11 of them i don't hear from none of them unless mm -hmm. it's time for like a cookout this that and the third like we don't call and check on each other say hey how you doing you doing all right blah 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 blah, blah. We don't went through snowstorms, hailstorms. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're good for when you have a surgery or something like that. Yeah. But no one is teaching us how to have relationships and check in with people. And I'm trying to do things that I've never seen displayed. And it's hard. Yeah, I guess it's because of check. Because it's got, weird and yeah. it's not, it's, it is normal, but it's not normal you have to be for me. You have to be conscious of it. You have, exactly. Yeah, that's a... So with my nieces and nephews, I make it a point to check in on them several times a week so that they always know now, that auntie is here. Now, I could do better. I, I don't do like once a week, but I, I try my best to yeah. stay conscious. And then, too, you have the... You have the the part on you, not only with family, it could be friends and anybody is that you sometimes you feel like you're the only one that always reaching out. Yes. Checking on everybody else and then How do we get here? Nobody <laughs> Nobody really wanna check on you or if they do check on you, they want something. Right. So it it is a catch twenty two, man. It is. Yeah, it is. But we say all that to say that Mr. Prosper is at a point where he was like, I'm at a point now where I'm pretty much alone. So not only is this needed for your generation, People like me, yeah. we need somewhere to go and chop it up with the fellas and talk about what's going on. And, and Hollywood was like, what's going on, Mr. Yeah, Prosper? Yeah, what's the real deal, what's, bro? What's going on? And he was like, I've been hearing about that virus, virus, man. Yep. <laughs> and he said, I heard that older people are more susceptible to really getting it and it's taking them down. And Hollywood was like, don't you even worry about nothing like he that. He said, everybody's got to come through me first. He said, whatever <laughs> it is, we got you, Mr. Prosper. So I was like, so this is what y'all not going to do. What no. you're not going to do, Queen Sugar, no. is mess around and put this coronavirus on Mr. Prosper. I promise, <laughs> like the old people say, I swear for God, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. Right. Out of all of us. Because this is the handwriting that's on the wall But here. I don't know. I got a feeling that it's, that it's going to get one of them. Oh, Lord, Lord, it's gonna Lord. get It's going to get one of them. It's going to, but we, we just don't. Yeah. And I keep thinking about him or Unvi, one of them, because they got to make an example out of one Somebody, older person yeah. that's going to get it. Or, and he's the only older one left, hmm. except for Unvi. Let them Landry's get it, man. Yeah, let, yeah them. let them get it. So, Micah, let's talk about Micah. It is homecoming weekend, so of course, Charlie and Davis West, Davis West, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> he <laughs> coming up to the college and um, enjoy the festivities of homecoming. Miss those days, man. So, Charlie was like, where do you want us to meet you at, Michael? You want us to meet you in the dorm? He was like, no, meet me at such and such. So, they get there. And Kiki is off to, the, off to the side as well. So, she's there to support Micah as well. And 
And Charlie was like, so where is Micah and all of this? And then the step show starts and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Y'all know how it goes. Mm -hmm. And Charlie was like, Micah is Micah missing all, this. all of this. I said, I said you don't know <laughs> that, that he a part of all this. <laughs> when it came time for them to introduce themselves behind their mask, Charlie's face went from <laughs> And I said, you know what? This takes me back to episode one. Season one, episode one. Why is it that Charlie always gets embarrassed publicly? Yep, always. When Davis West messed around him. That was public, yep. And she came across that basketball court. I said, snatch him up. Snatch him up. Why would you do that, Micah? Like, do you really think that that was the greatest idea was to let your mama know that you pledged by displaying it publicly hmm. like no heads up no nothing i i don't get it at all but she took it way better now do you think he did it that way because he she she knew that or he knew that she wasn't gonna probably agree with it yeah but i don't get it i don't get it but she took like i said but she but it away. comes back was it was it was it uh was it charlie the one that said that you you rather um ask for forgiveness than permission, than permission. i think it was charlie yeah. so <clears throat> She had a conversation with Micah and she was like, why would you pledge them? You know what that reputation is. You should have went ahead and pledged what your father pledged. And he was like, um, they didn't want me. And she was like, like so you, you should have told us. We could have gotten you in. I'm like, no. Nah. And in Micah's defense, I, I agree. Nah, he was I like, that. if nah. someone doesn't want me, I don't want you making it happen for me. Right. I'm not a little boy. I'm not a little kid. Exactly. Because I'm said, only going to be here because stop saying that. y'all made <laughs> me to be here. They yeah. don't want me here. And I said, well, I agree with him with that. But you are a little boy and you're a little kid. Until you can pay that tuition by yourself. <laughs> don't say that no more. Don't say it at all unless you got a student loan in your name. <laughs> and that hurts. But mine is paid off. Hallelujah. It took us forever to pay off your student loan. So. Oh, hallelujah. Good Lord. Mm -hmm. and, you, I, and you were paying for that way before you met me. Oh, way before. Yeah, way before you met me. Thank yeah. you, baby. <laughs> Thank you for bringing more money in this I'm, glad, I'm glad you stuck around after it got paid off. <laughs> Because, you know, ninjas leave you when stuff get, 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 get back good now. Hello. But you're still here. I'm still here, man. I ain't going nowhere. Well, I can't say that either. If things get real, real, real rough, you never uh, say You ain't going nowhere. I hope not. Yeah. Because we cool. We good together. So, what else had happened? Uh, we see that Unvi <laughs> and Hollywood are over there at the spot, right? The real spot. And they just chopping it up because evidently Hollywood's grand opening is about to happen. I was trying to figure out was it about to happen next week or the yeah, next, or day. next day. Yeah. Because it seemed like the timeline kept moving for me. By like, the way, they was talking. Yeah. Yeah. But Unvi brings out this bottle of wine and this um, plaque that she had got made for Hollywood. And they decided that on the next night before opening that they're going to recreate their first date. I thought that was so that was dope. cute. And that was dope. so, I mean, I just thought it was everything. So we get to that point. Hollywood got on a salmon colored church choir. Men's choir. Men, church men's choir. Matching outfit. Linen outfit. Yep. The only thing that he was not, that he didn't have on was the matching sandals. Salmon color, y'all. Yeah. Clean as a whistle. And she comes through there in her I'm about to freak them dress. Uh-huh. Well, Say, wait skirt. a minute. Say, wait a minute. I said, so that's how. <laughs> that's what you had on when y'all first met? Oh, God, I got you. So they start recreating the conversation that they were having. And Unvi said, you know what? You really were a good one. Because you sat there and you dealt with all of this sass and all of this mouth and all of this attitude. Mm -hmm. I would have left. He said that I couldn't get enough of it. He said, I seen a woman that knew what she wanted and who was in full control. And I loved her then and I love her now. I, I mean, said, shoot, many times we told Hollywood to leave on fire. Yeah. Because she kept on pushing every problem time, every problem came along, she she was pushing them away. But he stuck on in there though. He did. But I thought when that wife came around though, I, I thought, thought that, that was, was it. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be the nail in the coffin. Yeah. 
I was like, Hollywood, you were so perfect. Until but that was that was a testament of the type of man that he was. That even though that was his ex wife and Well, wife wife. Yeah, well well, yeah, wife wife. But, but he she, kept her as his wife for the benefits because she yeah, had mental illness. Exactly. Yeah, that does speak to your character because yeah. anybody else would have been like, if like, you don't hey, go you, get on Medicaid. Hey, I ain't nothing. I, I'm getting ready to get married to the new lady here. Yeah. So. But he yeah, should have told but her it was a catch too. 22. It I, is. Because you probably wouldn't let me do it. Hell no. Uh -huh. If you don't get her down at that health department, she better apply for Medicaid and, and get a spin down or something. Because was she able to do Do you know how expensive? Look, you know how expensive getting benefits is? You know how expensive it is? And our, our job pay for a good portion of ours. And yeah. that skin is still expensive. Huh. Woo! Yeah, right. so I guess he has a catch 22. You know, Hollywood didn't last long. But no. I mean, he, he, he tried. So we see over at Charlie's. Charlie. I need Charlie to get her on boo. Because she looks so alone. Like everybody well, Charlie else, don't need no boo right now. She do. She needs. She somebody. got too many problems that she handling for other people to get a boo. She needs somebody to knock the dust off. That's what she needs. She's stressed. She just need to go to the bar and pick somebody up. Nah, last time she went to that bar, and then <laughs> <laughs> Charlie was drunk as a skunk. Yes, yeah, she was. Oh boy, wasn't that Roberto? What yeah. That? Yeah. yeah, 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 where he at? I can't even remember what happened to them. Cause Re I know she brought Ramirez. Was that no, no, Ramir, no, Ramirez is on power. That's, shh, fuck, I don't we, care. We, got, <laughs> we mix them all up. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. So, Charlie gets a telephone call or a message from this girl named Angela Harris, who evidently works with Charlie. And now this coronavirus thing has become real. There's an emergency conference call that needs to be said because mm -hmm. of what the CDC is putting out and whatnot. So we have a split screen of what Charlie is hearing and what Charlie is saying. And we see that Aunt Vi is getting a phone call in the middle of her date with Hollywood. And Hollywood said at all times, this is what you're going to have to answer your phone. She answers the phone and she was like, Charlie, baby, can I call you back? And Charlie was like, Aunt Vi is very important. So she went on to speak about what was going on. And she wanted your um I vibe to know first because right now they are making the decision that they're gonna put everyone on lockdown for two weeks and your business is gonna be affected. So I want you to be the first one to know about it because you're gonna have to close down on Vice Pies for two weeks. I said, honey, if uh, only you knew. Only, if only it was that easy, just <laughs> and two only weeks. it was two weeks. Yeah. Hmm. Which should have been done from the get. But anyway, we wouldn't be here. But um, so then you see the screen, the split screens of everyone receiving this information. Michael getting it on his phone. You see Nova and Calvin's laying on the couch and they're having mm -hmm. a discussion. And Calvin, he must be a Trump supporter. Because he over there talking about some, you know, Trump said, eh, you know, he don't always get it right. And this, this. And no one no, was like, no, that clown? That clown don't even read his own briefings in the morning. So, no. Look, that's look, even, look at him stumbling through it. <laughs> and Nova was like, no, something is really up. You follow the money. The the NBA yeah, has suspended all the season. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's what I was saying when it, when it first happened. When they saw shutting that follow, down, I said, I said uh-huh. There's something really happening now. I knew something was happening when you came home. See, I was still on short term. Yeah. When you came home, and our job is so strict on working from home because yeah. of... We've been asking for it for years. Because of the clearances that yeah. you need to work from home. And all, just like that... All of a sudden, they... And I said, what about yep. the clearances and the firewalls? And then, what is... what was? Yeah, because I had got back to work from when I was home with her for the week when she had the surgery. I got back in the office. It was like... Yeah, we getting laptops and we going home. And I was like, for what? Because at that time, coronavirus really wasn't that that popular yet. Yeah, we was learning about yeah, it. Yeah, we are still learning about it. And yeah, it was like, because the coronavirus is coming, it's getting worse. I was like, oh yeah. It's like, sweet. And like two weeks later. <laughs> you said sweet? <laughs> I was like, sweet. Two weeks later, my A was at home. And been here ever since. And been here since ever last month. Since. So I'll be a year next month. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. So now we see that everybody is going to the shutdown. So Hollywood, he can't have his grand opening. He can't even open his spot, man. And you know, and seeing that what we know, you done put in all that money. And it's going to sit there. But that's a, you know what? That's probably a testament to just, you know, thinking back to when it all happened, when it got shut down, of him that people was getting ready to open the business. 
and all the people who had who shut their business down. That's why I was like on on, on Vi was like this place can be closed for two weeks. We be here, it be open back on on April the first. Yeah. And I'm like, so many people back then thought their business was gonna be open up in another couple of weeks or a month or so. They wouldn't they wouldn't expect it for a year. There are places that have been here since I've been here. Yeah. Way before me. Yep. That you go downtown, and I mean, when I say downtown, you know that's where all the good spots are to eat. Yep. They're gone. Gone. They are gone. And I'm not talking about the little mom and pops. I'm talking about the main staples of the community, the steakhouses, yep. the places that you have to reserve months in advance. Yep. They are gone. 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 It is insane. It yes, is insane. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. And, and, I, and I'm going to say this, and, and I'm, I'm gone. It's so funny how everything got shut down back then, except for major corporations. What's that about? Sure, were, were they trying to were they trying to flush out the little guys? Just saying, straight from the VA. Dirty, dirty south. Two up. Two, Two down. down. Holla. Holla.